Welcome everyone to our today's session. My name is Cristina Tavares and it's my pleasure to be here with you. In behalf of Strateg International, we are very happy to have you in this webinar, Expand Your Business to Mexico. So first of all, I would like to thank to every, uh, every one of our speakers. And without any further ado, I would like to introduce Manuel Ribeiro, uh, General Director of Stratica. Manuel, thank you very much for being here. Uh, welcome, the scenario is all yours. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was uh, on mute. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Cristina. Welcome everybody, Bel uh, Belisa, uh, Gabby, Laura, um, Marisa, all the team. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you um, uh, for coming here to, to listen uh, a little bit more and learn about uh, how to do business in Mexico. Um, so I don't know if we can start with the presentation, Christy. In this case, we're going to talk. What I'm going to talk is uh, why Mexico? I mean, a lot of people uh, in Canada, they uh, they are looking for normally exporting to the US. US is uh, uh, the closest market to Canada and the biggest one uh, close to Canada, right? So um, a lot of people ask me, why are you promoting Mexico? Why is this uh, uh, something that we should look uh, as a market uh, to 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 um, uh, that could interest uh, my company, right? So the first thing that I want to tell you is because we have um, a very good advantage over the rest of the world, the, the, the advantage of the the TMEC, the Cosma, the, the the trade agreement between our three countries. So uh, that's a huge, huge advantage that we have and that we don't use enough. I mean, US and Mexico are are are. Um, profiting a lot from this uh, trade agreement and Canada and the US too, but uh, the, the trade between Mexico and Canada, it's not as good as it should be or it could be. Uh, let's not forget that uh, Mexico has 120 million uh, people market. That's four times bigger than what we have here in Canada. So that's one of the first thing that we should know. And the second part is that we don't have the same um, quantity of competitors there. So it's it's kind of a very new market for a lot of the things that we could sell there. That's the first part with with the 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 TMEC and the Cosma, right? Um now, let a lot of people tell me, well, what about manufacturing, right? It's uh can we start manufacturing there and selling to uh, Mexico or selling to the US? Well, guess what? There's a couple of advantages in doing that also, or even just opening a distribution center, just having a foot there, because uh, first it's uh, there's a lot of advantages in manufacturing or distributing in Mexico. First one is we're close to the borders for the US, so we can obtain all the south part of the market of the US and the local market, the 120 million people market in Mexico. And there's also another uh, very big advantage to manufacturing or distributing in Mexico, it's what we call the EMEX. The EMEX program is, uh, it's a special program set up uh, from, from the government of Mexico set this uh, project up. So we, you can come to Mexico, manufacture here, send back your products to be finished or to be integrated in uh, um, a value chain like uh, automotive or another one, and not paying the taxes, right? Because it's just manufacturing. So you're not bringing anything, you're not selling anything in Mexico. That's one of the programs that you, you could benefit uh, uh, from too, right? And um, the third one, and I think right now it's one of the more important is uh, the changes in Chinese market and overall in the world. Um, we have rising oil and shipping costs. I mean, we have rising costs of everything mostly, but shipping costs have been literally, uh, I don't know, it's 10 times more uh, expensive to ship a container now than one year and a half ago. Uh, it, it, I don't know, I remember uh, a 42 uh, uh, feet uh, container was, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, $2,400. And now we're talking about $25,000. So 
yes, that's uh, more than 1000% or close to 1000%. And this is something that you want to consider because, and we're going to go to the next uh, uh, slide here. Um, this changes that we have right now are not just something that's happening and it's going to stop. It's uh, first we see that this changes in logistics are here to stay, or at least they're going to continue uh, um, affecting uh, the, the whole uh, network of trade in the world. The price of containers, as I said, uh, uh, are have increased uh, a lot. Uh, COVID pandemic and other uh, geopolitical problems around the world, mainly uh, all all the, the 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 problems happening right now with Russia and China and uh, the COVID, uh, you know, disrupting uh, all the trade around the world. Um, that's something that is is also uh, a sign that you may want to have all your your balls near to home, right? It's you you don't want to be spread out and to depend so um, so highly on uh, your 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 market with let's say China or Asia, right? So um, I, as we know, uh, we still have uh, what we call split shipping. So we used to uh, be able to ship a half container, a consolidated transport, stuff like that. Now it's getting uh, a lot more difficult because big companies are taking advantage of their wealth and they're, they're securing uh, their own containers. So we don't have the access that we used to have to split containers or uh, um, uh, not fully loaded uh, uh, containers, right? And uh, some other things that are affecting and we, we can see happening in the near future is stuff like the Brexit, right? It's freight rates uh, for goods to and from UK and Europe have have uh, uh, raised to to uh, to the ceiling. So um, that's th those are main reasons that I, I would say uh, as a strategic um, measure uh, will be important to start looking for local geographically uh, markets, big markets, nice markets where the rules are similar to the ones that we have in Canada or US where we have uh, the same the same tribunals. Uh, we have uh, you, we have access to to trade dispute uh, uh, organizations. Uh, so that's all those five factors are very important. Um, so that's that's mainly it. I mean, uh, I think. Not just because the market is interesting, but because of strategic strategic um, knowledge of things uh, we have to start looking for local and um, more geographically uh, located uh, partnerships right so that's uh, that's for that part i mean we're, we're going to be here for all the questions that you may have but uh, thank you very much i think uh, for now uh, i'm going to let uh, my partner gabriela sorrilla to talk you talk to you about feasibility, how to do it, how to go to Mexico. Thank you very much, Manuel. Uh, thanks a lot. Yes. So, like Manuel was saying, there it, there is a huge opportunity to come and do business in Mexico, but it has to be done the right way. And we've seen a lot of examples of really good opportunities that are missed because when some of the people that try to come and do business here in Mexico, they don't do it on the right way and then they miss that specific opportunity. And there's very small and uh, like specific nuances that we have to take into consideration. It's not the overall how to do business, who should I sell to. Those things are very, I guess we can we can arrange them not so in a not so difficult way, but there's the small things that make a very big difference in taking these opportunities that Manuel was talking about. We had, for example, the case of a customer that when came to us, 
in Stratica, they, they're from the province of Quebec. When they came to us, they already had a Latin American representative. He spoke Spanish. He knew exactly, they, they did software. He knew exactly, like he knew the region very well. He had done a couple of sales in Colombia, but he was not getting any traction in Mexico. They were, he was trying to conduct the business the same way he would do it in Canada. It worked in Colombia, actually. He was, I guess, well, I'm not going to say he was lucky. He worked a lot on that. But he went through the regular channels. He looked at who the sourcing people from within the partners that he was trying to get were. And he was contacting these people, worked out in Colombia with a couple of them. It, he was not getting any traction in Mexico. So when he came to us, we started talking, we checked and we looked at how he was trying to do those sales, how he was trying to get in contact with those uh, with those distributors. And he explained to us, he's like, I, I call them, I email them. They say, yeah, we'll meet after. We, he told us we had a lunch meeting, then nothing happened after. And I wait weeks and weeks and weeks. And we looked at it, and it's the the thing is that the in those specific companies, it's the the sourcing people. They don't make the decision on who are they gonna buy from. So what we did is we looked at okay, these are the three key distributors for that type of software within Mexico. Who can we? How can we find a contact within our network that has a higher position than sourcing? So someone that can actually push sourcing to look at us and see our product and talk to us and seriously consider uh, consider us as an option. So we were able to find a couple of contacts very much in the Mexican way. We knew the brother of the sister-in-law, the da da da. We found some person, we were able to talk to them, we got that contact, we got that first meeting, and we were able to get traction a lot faster. That's Those are the little details why it is important to have a local partner in Mexico. And that's what we've been doing with a lot of our customers. It actually, the trade commissioner in Canada really recommends, and they make a lot of emphasis in their website on that. If you want to do business in Mexico, it's very important to have a local partner. Right now, with things how they are, we're very much used to do business in business uh, virtually. Actually, like us, we, we are part of Stratica, but we're in Mexico. We're always collaborating. But in Mexico, it still makes a difference to be here and to have a local partner and to see, to, to be perceived as local makes a big difference. So we've seen that with a few customers. And uh, that's, that's what I'm going to explain a bit on how we do that first part of becoming your representative here in Mexico. So if we can go through the presentation, Christy, please. The first, one of the first things that we do, for example, with this customer, we did it right away also. Okay, let's see, you're, you're trying to approach these partners, but what's actually, you, what does your market look like in Mexico? It's different from Colombia, it's different from the rest of Latin America, and it is definitely different from Canada and the US. So we take a look at the market, we check what are the real needs and what are they actually focusing on? So then you, we can we can make sure that your value proposition is adequate for the market in Mexico. So we're going to take a look now at how we do these market research and analysis, what the methodology is. So we take a look. Uh, we if we can go to the to the next slide. Sorry, we take a look at uh, different sources. We we have access in Mexico and internationally to uh, documental research and a lot of very different uh, various agencies that do research in Mexico. So we do research on those type of reports. We also do field research if it's required. We're not going to tell you, oh, if you're going to sell software or if you're looking into, I know, I don't know, mining software, we're not going to do much field research on that. 
but if it's probably uh, more of a retail or things like that, we can do the field research in Mexico. We know the we know the market. We know the culture. That's another thing that makes a difference. Make sure that you that you partner with someone that knows the culture that was that has lived in Mexico for a long time. So uh, sometimes we do in depth interviews if they're required. And once we gather all of that information, we do a competitive analysis too. So we checked, okay, this is what your market wants. This is what your competition is already doing. This is, and not only your competition in terms of who's selling something similar to you within Mexico, but how are your customers currently solving the problem that they have? How are they fulfilling that need that they have? So who's replacing you? That's pretty much what we look at in, in, in the Mexican market, right? And it, it, within three to four months, we provide you with a comprehensive report on the analysis that we did. So you can really know what your value proposition should be for Mexico. What are your key differentiators for this market? After completing that, we go to the next step and we take a look at uh, what's, your, what's the feasibility of your business. So technical, financial, and business feasibility. We make sure that you're going to have the, the, like, the lowest risk that you, that you could have. We, if, if we go to the next slide, we'll see the steps on how we take a look at this. We first check at the business model. How how are you like how are you planning on operating? We just make sure that that's adequate and adapted to the Mexican market. Or if you're not going to commercialize in Mexico, we make sure that the business model it's the adequate one to produce in Mexico. Okay. We then we checked all of the all of the commercial assumptions that you're going to have. What is the import process going to be like? Are you going to be importing something to Mexico? Are you going to are you going to be exporting something out of Mexico? So making sure that you have the details on all the nuances of that. Uh, what are the requirements? What are the costs that you're going to have? And not only in terms of money, in terms of time, we understand very well the dynamics here in Mexico and we wish things were a bit faster, but we know they're not. So from the beginning, we plan together with you what you're what you what you're going to have to do. What are the things and requirements that you're going to have to fulfill and how long are those going to take? How long does it have to do? Does it have to be done through a lawyer, through a notary? What are those things like? What are all the all of the things that you're going to have to complete? Having had having gathered all of that information, we do a financial evaluation of the project and we can we can define a, a, a business model with the full financial plan of it. So you'll know how much you will be spending and what's your expected return because we will have all of the information on the cost and the, we based on the market information will be able to make some predictions. Once we've completed that, once we know very well your market and what the the business model should should look like, we go to the next uh, to the next step. This one implies and, and this is where we start becoming your representative in Mexico if your business requires it, right? So we take a look at who are going to be your potential customers and suppliers. And here it is very important again to understand the culture and be able to assess whether those uh, suppliers that you're considering are actually they're trustworthy they're the ones that you need you'll be able how, how long have they been in business who are they in business with who are their suppliers all of those things we're able to do that due diligence and understand very well who you're going to be doing business with and we take a look also at who your customers could be so we're going to take a look at the details on how we do this. It, this is not a very long process. Once we've completed all of the gathering of information, if we can go to the next slide, we take a look. <clears throat> We identify who these people or organizations are. 
we do the research on them, we check whether they're whether they're actually good partners to have, good customers to have, and we give you the list of those key partners and the ones the the high potential customers with their contact information. At this point, you decide, you tell us, okay, you've told me who they are, who should or I could do business with, I'll contact them myself. That's that that totally depends on the type of business that you're doing. In some cases, that's totally feasible and you can do it. In in other cases, and it, it's happened with a few customers, they told us, look, I, I much rather you continue with the contact and you we actually become the representatives. We in most of the cases we have a, an email that represent that that gives us uh, like the visibility as the representative of the company and then we pass to the next step so i have a question uh um gabby yeah. uh, at, at that stage is it possible that i i hire my own uh sales manager in mexico uh do you help with that too or how does that works Totally possible if it's going to require like a full time, if you need someone to be doing a very thorough follow up, it is totally possible and we help you with that. We help you with the, we actually part of our services, we have recruitment services, talent acquisition services, and we help you with that. We are part of a lot of the large networks for talent acquisition acquisition in Mexico. So if you decide, I, I rather have someone from within my team that I can control, we will, we will help you hire that person. And run checks and everything. Make sure that, yeah. that the person's like kosher, it's okay. But yeah, a complete uh, a complete recruitment process. Yes, yeah, run checks. You, it's just like a just like you would do a recruitment process in Canada. We would provide you with. We would go through the filtering, through the searching, and we provide you with uh, with a group of candidates. We say, okay, these three are the, from the the last ones uh, and the finalists. You you can pick from these three, and you do the final interviews. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. So if you can go that way, like Manuel was saying, you can go that way and hire someone yourself. You can send a representative. You can do it from a representative. It totally depends on, on your needs. That's key. We're not, uh, we have a methodology, but each section of it, we adapt it to your specific needs, okay? So once we finish that, if you decide, okay, no, I want you to still represent me, we go to the next section. Uh, so we we approach your those potential customers and uh, suppliers or partners that you could have in Mexico. So if you can go to the next slide, we'll see the details on these. We actually it's we we do the the approach. We call them, we contact them. It depends on the type of personality, the type of company. In Mexico, it's very strange because in Canada we're not used to do business via WhatsApp. At least not so much as in Mexico. Here in Mexico, every Everything runs on WhatsApp. It's it's impressive. So it totally depends. If we know the company works that way, we will do the contacts uh, via WhatsApp. We will, if it's a more traditional company, we we would set up uh, meetings. So we would do that contacting. We will at this point. We are always uh, we're always working together with you, so we just make sure that the relationship is stable and that that it's it's uh, confirmed and then you can continue with the with the communication with the customers. So uh, that's that's the the part of feasibility and how we become your representative in Mexico. Like Manuel said, we will have a, a, a bit of time at the end for questions, but now I'll pass it on to my colleague uh, Belisa to look at the at the legal part of it. Thank you, Gabi. Thank you, Gabi. Um, so hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Belisa. And um, I also collaborate with Coeficiente and Stratica. And uh, so we um, we know that not having the knowledge to handle and cope with the legal requirements on a different country, it can become a real headache. So as just Gabby mentioned, it's not just about speaking the same language, but understanding the, no the hows, 
the whys and especially reaching out the right who's who's going to do who's going to help you out at that um, different country, uh, specifically in Mexico. Um, on this legal module from our CAMEX program, we focus on assisting you with some of the legal requirements to establish your company, such as copyrights, certifications, and all the necessary contracts, all grounded to the Mexican law. Okay. Um, uh, Christy, can you help me with the next slide, please? Uh, the next one, please. Uh, we basically offer you a close and personal accompaniment to make sure all the legal formalities are being held in a timely manner by working side by side with professional corporate lawyers who will be able to guide you through the required processes and documentation for Mexico. We can also assist you with the registration of your brand and necessary contracts so that you're up and ready to make business within the Mexican market. This usually takes an average of five to six months to gather and process all the requirements. However, it entirely depends on how elaborated the processes are, as well as the complexity of your business. The most important thing to keep in mind eh, for this module specifically is that instead of you having to deal with a lot of agencies and lawyers, um, you will only work with one point of contact through the entire process and that's our team, who at this point will be 100% on board with your business's know-how, as Gabby explained. Um, we make sure we deliver a clear document with all the required documentation and manage all this process with due diligence. Um, basically, that's our uh, what we consider on our legal module. Uh, I will now pass it on to Laura. Uh, she's our marketing director person. Yes, Manuel. Yeah, I have I have a question. Well, not not a question. I, I was going to to uh, uh, so let's say that at some point because it happens on this side too, and I know that it could be a problem there. Um, sometimes the ball falls between let's say the accounting firm and the legal team. Uh, is that something that is that what you're talking about when you you tell us that you'll be a single point of contact that you will ensure that communication because. The last client that we had, I don't know if uh, you remember, but uh, they they were, uh, you know, the lawyer were expecting to get something from the the accountant because uh, you know it's fiscal law and something like that, and everybody was waiting and everyone was like, no, 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 everything is okay, but we're waiting for right. Uh, so is this something that that can happen? Yeah, definitely. It it is it is it is um, basically um, to run through. All these necessary uh, documentation processes, um, it changes, of course, between Canada and Mexico. It's uh, a whole world very different. So uh, the you will only be dealing with us who are going to be dealing with all these teams, basically, um, to manage that they all deliver all the necessary uh, documentations in a timely manner. So, so it's basically just going through us. Yeah, you'll be own, owning uh, uh, that part. So making sure that Entirely. things happen, running after either the lawyer or the, the accountant or the, 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 the agency, the, 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 the governmental agency, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, I have a question. Do you know if uh, times in, in governmental agencies have uh, changed because of pandemics? Because we have that also in Canada. Times are not what they used to be in terms of getting uh, the, the certifications and permits and whatnot. Is, is there a lag on time uh, in that regard yes, for Mexico? Course. Yes, of course. We've also had impact on uh, because of the pandemic. Um, however, little by little, things are just going back uh, through the same times. However, in Mexico, uh, in normal times, uh, times are longer, longer, longer than uh, in Canada. So uh, that's also something that we help you understand uh, because we are uh, aware of all um, the necessary um, uh, uh, um, processes that you need to go through and the people because in Mexico also you need to contact many people, not just, for example, just one agency. Most of the times is you have to go through different ones. 
So we are the ones who know those those type of um, singularities that happen in Mexico instead of you having to first of all first uh, getting to know that getting to understand how it works the legal requirements in Mexico we already know that and we have uh, a, ve a very wide uh, database of lawyers uh, who work specifically on this type of um, uh, of processes so it's definitely easier to go through us instead of okay 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 that's anything. that's really really cool uh gabby i don't know if you want to share that we, we've done some stuff like uh you know uh, notary publics or uh, the, the 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 offices in 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 mexico city are taking longer because there's longer processing times but because we have a very nice network other you know in other states we we were able to run the registration through i don't know i don't, I don't remember what what was the one that uh, that we did but it was like 15 or 20 days faster than yes thanks manuel actually thanks because that's something that that we're quite proud of because we have a large network we we don't only work in mexico city we have a lot of contacts in mexico city that's another thing that's very different from canada in canada we're used to have things distributed across different cities across major cities in mexico a lot of the things are centralized most of the things are centralized the the like most of the things run in mexico city so a lot of the agencies are packed here and notaries take very long to be able to process certain documents or certain uh, certain requirements here in mexico city so there's no problem with doing that through a notary in a small city and we actually do it probably you haven't heard about Zamora Michoacán but we have and we have a, a couple of notaries there that can do the processing in a couple of days so something that in Mexico City would take us almost a month there they do it for half of the cost and in a couple of days because for them the agency that processes those things in that state it's not that full and they can do it very easily and they know the guy that runs the agency. So yeah, that, those things have helped us uh, a lot to provide our customers with a very fast response on, on, on that type of things. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, uh, Gabby and Belisa. Thank you, Manel. Um, so we'll now uh, pass it on to Laura. She's our marketing director. She's expert on commercial strategies, development and marketing research. And she'll explain us about all the marketing and commercial plan module. Mm, thank you very much, Ivali. Well, based on the feasibility module information we gathered and with that information, it, the, the value proposition already defined and the main goals in order to enter to the Mexican market. In this model, if we go to the next slide, please, we develop the most effective marketing mix to export your business to Mexico. Here you will have a commercial plan, an integral commercial plan, in order to enter the Mexican market in the most effective web way. Sorry. If we go to the next one, please. Okay. So first, we work on a detailed commercial plan with insights into the local markets. With this plan, you will have the strategy, the tactical strategy based on the general strategy made in the model number one with the marketing strategy to reach your customers with a promotional strategy. And you will also know how to price your products for the Mexican market. This is very important in order for you to know who is your audience? Who are you going to talk to? Who is really needing your, your product or your service, but in a, in a very detailed uh, manner, okay? We will also have the necessary information and all the uh, requirements to support, to adapt your product packaging and labeling in to the Mexican market if, if required, no? If we here, this will take this an average of two months and you will have a complete document with all the commercial strategy to enter the, the market and, uh, and target your, your audience. Next one, please. 
here we also work on the, the marketing tool development marketing tools development we work on the adaptation of your current materials sometimes Mm, a simple translation doesn't work, no? And if you are talking to the Colombian market or to the Mexican market, it's a very different way you talk to them. So it's important to adapt the communication materials, even your procedures, if you have a manuals or, or something required for your product. It's very important to, to adapt the, the the communication materials to your audience. Who are you talking to? So they could understand and feel and on and know that you are really talking to them. No, it's not like for a generic uh, market. So we will adapt this and we will be it to the next one, please. Thank you, Christine. Here we will first identify the key elements to be included in the communication materials. We will translate and ad translate and adapt all the materials you already have. Mm, the adaptation is which are the key messages that really talks to the Mexican market, the content and the key messages, and we will also work in the materials design. Also, the how is the design? depends on the on the market we are going to target, no? So it's important. I have a question, Laura. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt, but the thing is, um, I, I've seen a lot of, of, you know, companies just hiring a translator, you know, to, uh, they have their, their message or their, their, their advertising or even their website in, in, in French or in English or in French, French and English, and they just translate it in Spanish. Is that the correct way to go? No, well, you can start with a translation, no, with a simple translation, but of course it, it has to be adapted to the market you are talking to. For example, in the case of the client that Gabby already mentioned at the beginning, this software company which uh, entered to the Mexican market, they had a website, they had a, even they had a website and a corporate presentation. If you read the complete presentation in Spanish and we knew so, uh, uh, about the industry, the information was very confused. So very confusing, no? So it was very important to work with the, with the client and understand what they want to communicate, what is relevant to the audience here in Mexico and to adapt the mark to the messages and the and the and also the layout, even it was like with the, the beginning in the middle. And so the even we work also in the layouts and, and all the content no? and then design. Yeah, it's 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 very important what you're saying, because we don't have to forget that uh, the audience has it it's, has a different profile overall. I mean, in particular, but overall we're talking about in Canada, we're talking about the uh, 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 you know, uh, Canadians are in average 47, 48 years old and Mexicans mm -hmm. we're talking about 26 years old. So, uh, you know, th that that's the first big difference. Then it's the socioeconomic, you know, a lot of things. So yes. you're 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 absolutely right. It's not just translating. It's you're not talking to a, a, a 47 years old man. Uh, you're talking uh, to a, a 27 years old uh, young woman, right? Yes. That, and, and they have the, the the later is thinking on insurance and 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 uh, you know uh, uh, chalet in the north and uh, uh, the 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 Mexican one is thinking on having a new TV and maybe uh, you know getting married and having kids. So uh, <laughs> the realities yeah. are completely different. Once we, for example, we also have a very different uh, uh, another case another. Uh, uh, example, for example, a company for the gray market, no? The, in Spain, they have like a very full of information, a very informative web website, like full of certifications, data about illnesses and etc. Et and here in Mexico, the communication, we made a, a, a benchmark and all the messages are very short, very clear, very friendly. 
And if you see the images, they are hugging the, the grandpa, the grandmother, and the, the nurse is smiling, very happy. And for example, in the one from Spain, it's very informative. You see like nobody's hugging, no one. Uh, the nurse is very serious and professional. So it depends on who are you talking to. And in, okay. this is the value we give you. No? We yeah. really tell you how to communicate and engage with your audience. In mm -hmm. fact, what you're saying is very interesting because the one that's making the decision in Spain, it's probably the the older people, and in Mexico, it's probably the sons and and daughters. So yes. yeah, absolutely. It's who's who's gonna decide and pay? Who's the payer? Who's the, the 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 champion of of the value that you're giving or not? It's different completely. So yeah, mm -hmm. wow, that's that's mm -hmm. that's really nice to to uh, and, and so you you help the company. To understand that and to adapt the message that's that's great. yes 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 and all of this based on the information that we already gathered if we don't have all the information we and we need something else that we don't have from module one we gather it and we make all the required research in order to have a very effective marketing mix and very adapted and uh, and focus to the to the audience we are targeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this in this in this uh, in this phase, you will have all the translations adapted, of course. The brochure, one brochure, one professional brochure, and also one presentation for potential customers. It depends if you want a corporate presentation or a presentation regarding your service or a product in, in particular, no? So this can be adapted. Next one, please, Christine. Okay. Uh, well, I already mentioned the web page. Yes, this is a, a very uh, important element uh, to work in, to work with, uh, because as I mentioned, Sometimes it's very easy for the for the companies to say, no, you, we already have one. Let's translate it, and that's all. No, it's very important to to identify who are which are going to be the key elements and the set the the layout. We also work on and design and the programming uh, of the web. So if you go with uh, through different uh, websites. For example, let's say key, key brands around the world, like for example, Danone or Coca-Cola for to, to mention some uh, massive consumption products. The websites are completely different from one region to another and to one country to another. So it's very important to work on this. We help you with the programming and we support the launch of all the of all the required uh, elements, key elements in the in the web page. For example, if you need to have like a WhatsApp chat in, in the in the in the in the web page or you want to have a, a newsletter inside, it depends, no? What about what about social media is is, is how um, does it works in, in Mexico? Uh, let's let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, uh, Christy, yes. The, the digital market digital marketing it's it's very important in Mexico it's um, it's very used and most of the companies they have their website as 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 the encore um, and then they have also the the social platforms no so for example they the most common here in mexico are uh, depending on the product but the most common if it's not like a professional services are facebook and instagram facebook is decreasing a bit but it's still very important instagram is also very important it's growing and TikTok is like going uh, is running here in, in mexico as as in many parts of the world so yes, we work also in a digital campaign and we develop a specific uh, 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 strategy, a very tactical specific strategy for, for the digital campaign. We set up the goals, we define the platforms. We also, if you already have some social media platforms 
for the Mexican market. We we check your, the profile you already have in order to to be optimized. And if you don't have, we open it and do it and and design it in the proper way. No. Uh, we also work on the on, on the strategy, on the goals, and we define a monthly content plan. It's very flexible. It's not like if it's already defined, you can move nothing. No, you can make some changes, but it's like a monthly content plan. I uh, plan uh, to be to be adapted. No, we also help you with the post designs and the publications. And we monthly make a performance report. So we are making constant social listening on what is working, what is making uh, the most, uh, the highest engagement and what is working the best. So here you will have an execution and evaluation social media uh, and evaluated social media campaign for six months in two platforms. And well, these are the most common, but if you are uh, focused on the B2B market, well, we can also uh, uh, make a review if you want to work with LinkedIn or with other social media platforms. It depends. No? OK, if we go to to the next. Well, uh, we have finished. I just wanted to check. Thank you. Thank you for for your time. And now I will pass it on to you, Manuel. Hey, muchas gracias. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Laura. So yeah, uh, it's it's super interesting. Uh, and let me tell you something. Uh, when I first, uh, because I don't know if if we told the the, the audience, but uh, I'm 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 born in Mexico, and the first time I came here, because a lot of Canadian companies tell me, oh, you know something. It's very complex. I mean, come on, it's, this country is it's it's very complicated, and the 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 thing is that it's not. It's just starting a business in a different country is different, and and we're not used to, and we're used to do things our own way, right? So this is this is why I, I strongly suggest that you get this, um, you know, entering this market uh, by design instead of just entering it and trying to learn on the way uh, it's it's the way to do. I if I had the chance to re-enter the Canadian market and do it differently with the help of some uh, company that will guide me and and bring me, uh, you know, even even uh, the accountants, how they work and uh, how are the, the pace is different. You know, here I remember that uh, one time when I got here, uh, I tried to go and, and contact my accountant and they told me, yeah, maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll give you uh, an appointment. And I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm heading your way right now, you know, because in Mexico, if, if the accountant wants your business, he's going to uh, receive you right away that day or next day, not in, in a couple of weeks. And well, a, a couple of weeks later, I recalled this accountant and told him, "I'm sorry, I, I will take, you know, the two weeks appointment. I'm, I'm because I wasn't able to get, uh, uh, to get a, a over the counter accountant. Right? It's like it was impossible. So, yeah, uh, thank you very much for uh, pointing us to that, uh, Laura. It's, uh, it's uh, everything is different, and 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 uh, conveying the right message." Uh, is the base to getting uh, uh, success in, in a new market. So uh, for my part, I'm going to talk about, let's say that you already uh, decided that you're coming to uh, to, Mo to Mexico. You have uh, um, reviewed that information. You've talked to us, to uh, uh, the Consul, to uh, Delegation Générale du Québec au Mexique, Affaires Mondiales Canada, and you want to go to Mexico. So how do you soft land and how do you start commercialization? So, um, Christina, please, next slide, I'm going to try to to explain uh, very quickly uh, how to do uh, soft landing. So, Mexico as Canada is is not, uh, um, uh, 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 it, it's, it's very different depending on where you go, right? So, we're not talking about, uh, um, we're talking about 32 states, the equivalent of provinces, and we're talking about three main cities like Mexico, 
uh, Mexico City, which uh, I, I don't remember exactly, but it's what close to 26 million people. It's almost yeah, it's more than half of the population of Canada in one city. So, you know that you have just just in that city, you have a whole market ready for you. You have to understand. So where do you want to start going? Are you going there or you, you want to go to Monterey? You know, Monterey or Guadalajara. Guadalajara is the second biggest city with what? Uh, five million people. So close to Montreal, uh, to to Vancouver. Um, and then we have Monterey with maybe 3.8 or 4 million people. Um, and you, you're talking about uh, Monterey is very close to the US, so a couple of hours from Laredo, Texas. And uh, Guadalajara, it's uh, it's near the, 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 the Pacific. It's uh, near uh, um, uh, the ports. And Mexico City, it's at the center, the, the, the central plateau, right? So where are you going? How, how do you decide where, where you're going to go? Um, then how are you going to start doing this business? Are you going to hire people? Uh, are you going to, to uh, um, incorporate your company in Mexico and acquire uh, legal responsibilities and labor responsibilities from the beginning? I mean, uh, I don't know if that's intelligent. You're, you're, even if you're, 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 you're brought in by hand and by design by a company like Stratica, there's still a risk, right? It's entering a new market. There's always a risk. So how do you minimize that risk? How do you make sure that you don't invest a lot of money and then uh, it, it turns out that your business model or your products will not uh, do the right thing and you already have invested in, I don't know, a property or incorporation. You already uh, uh, um, uh, hired people and you have labor obligations in Mexico, right? So. It says I identify shelters. Well, that's that's one of the main questions. It's how do I enter Mexico? And let's say that I'm going to distribute or manufacturing Mexico. So I'm going to hire people. Do I start like Greenfield? I, I own my, my my stuff and start manufacturing there or distributing there? Or do I hire a company that will do that for me? Or do I, uh, you know, what, what's the right model? That That's one of the first big questions you get once you've decided where you want to go and that you want to go. You want to go, you, where do you want to go? Now, how do you want to go, right? So that's something that we're going to do for you also. It's trying to figure out what's the best model to enter. So either uh, uh, contract manufacturing or contract distributing or uh, going through distributors or hiring people or getting to a shelter. And that's a very interesting concept, the shelter program. It's uh, um, a Mexican government enabled uh, a model where you will hire a full company, will have con control of everything that these people are going to do, but it's it's uh, it's a, um, a project that it will be completely built to you by a company. It's similar to what they call maquila, but it's not maquila. So all that that kind of decisions to make, we will help you go uh, through that part, right? Um, and then once you have selected the model, we'll help you decide with which one of the providers or partners or uh, industrial parks or offices or etc. Right? It's really help you out with a, a selection matrix. With you know, it's not just gut feeling. Ah, yeah, I like this guy, and I'm gonna start doing business with him. Well, yes, that's a part. You need to have some kind of uh, you know, uh, there the, the, the have to be some love there, but we will help you um, categorize all the the important uh, items for you to consider to start doing business where, uh, in, in in which way, with who. So that's mainly it. It can last from six months to a year. From I can tell you if if you are really spot on and you already know what you want, it can be clo closer to three months, but typically it will take at least six months. Next slide, please, Christina. Mm. So commercialization. Where are you going to first? Are you going to distribute directly? Are you going to, are you going to sell business to business, business to consumer? Are you going to, to manage your own marketing 
Are you going to to uh, um, establish a channel partner distribution? You know, what do you need? And, and this will bring on the legal part also because we'll need to 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 craft a contract for distribution and, and try to set up the right rules for your your distribution uh, partners to not get in, in in conflict with each other, right? So it's the right approach, negotiation with suppliers or or distribution partners, um, business relationship with the with the ones that we already identified uh, on the first model. Follow up on sales, you know, it's uh, uh, if you ha already have a CRM, that's great. We'll help you adapt the, the part, uh, the, the Mexican part. If you don't have one, we'll help you get one, right? To to start uh, uh, following up on the right uh, uh, contracts. And either you have your own uh, machine running or you're running a machine through us. Those are possibilities on the table. Um, so, and obviously helping you uh, fine tuning the strategy if it's required, and it's almost always required. It's I don't know you, Gabby, but uh, I, I I I seldom uh, seen a company that hits uh, you know a, a home run on the first on the first uh, uh, turn to the bat. Yeah, no, it's it's always necessary to do a few adaptations. Yeah, agree. OK, so um, next next slide, please. Then some people in Canada tell me that um, are they eligible for a subsidy? And here what I can tell you is that it depends. It depends on 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 the year and the month and it depends also on the type of company you are right so if you are already trying to um sell abroad and you have some um sales done in another country and you want to focus on 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 mexico uh there there is right now a program open uh, from the federal government to uh to help uh companies uh, pay for um, this efforts, right? Either to help with the last year it was seventy five percent. I think this year it's fifty percent of your 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 expenses going to Mexico. But there's always a way to find out if there's resources allocated for uh, companies. And here, let me tell you something. And and this is something I I. I I get a little bit uh, carried on sometimes because big companies have their lobbies and they have access to all these subsidies and help. And most of the time, smaller companies like like my, my company, like our company, we don't know about this programs. We have to really go and you know it's it it's it's a hard uh, process. It, it's a long process to find out what's the eligibility criteria. Uh, what are the 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 the, the, the times to to do uh, applications for subsidies, stuff like that? So that part we will also help you get there because it's something that we manage very well. That we know the timing. We know when it. it I mean, not myself. In this case, we have a, an expert, Edgar Trujillo, who's not here, but Edgar is the expert in terms of that. And let me tell you something. Once you're already in Mexico, there's also subsidies and help uh, for uh, some uh, uh, processes there. Now, right now, we don't have a lot of them, but it's as we've, we've spoken before, it's always a matter of time. Sometimes, I mean, uh, I remember like four times, uh, four years, five years ago, there was a program to uh, to uh, for the acquisition of um, manufacturing equipment, right? So you, you had a subsidy of up to 75% of 50% of the equipment. If you were, let's say, uh, hiring people or um, uh, creating new jobs or stuff like that. So that's also part of our mandate and we can help you go through that part. So uh, please, it's very important ask Sometimes there's nothing right now, but the plan, uh, a good plan is 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 better than just, uh, you know, we, we all have the, the fear of missing out. Well, don't. The, the market is not going to run. 
it's going to be there. And uh, I, I prefer a hundred times having a client that's willing to to make a plan, start slowly and do the right things and minimize the risk than to just go there because the market's there, it's hot and you know we're going to miss it. So take your time, talk to us, call us. We'll make sure that uh, uh, you, 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 you end up doing a good business in Mexico. Um, now, I want to do something. Uh, I'm I'm really excited to to bring in. I don't know if uh, Jean Francois is already here, Christina. Uh, he's not, but we already have a couple of questions. So if you don't mind, I will start uh, reading them. Meanwhile, Jean Francois, join us, okay? Jean Francois is the general manager of Trevi uh, Manufacturing Pools in Canada, and uh, he's our latest client, and uh, he. Uh, started operations in Monterey. So I'm just uh, leaving you there. It's uh, but go ahead with the questions. Let's let's, <laughs> let's answer them. OK, so about what you mentioned earlier, Manuel, uh, someone it's asking us when the price of the containers from and to Mexico increase as well. From China? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not as much. But yes, it's uh, it's uh, it, it it it's been uh, going up uh, steadily, uh, slowly but steadily since a, a year and a half ago. Okay, we have another question here. It says, "Are the public databases that I can consult to carry out a market research study?" I'll let uh, that question okay. be answered by Gabby mm -hmm. or Laura. Thanks, Manuel. There are some that are public. I mean, you can you can search for them. the The data is not as accurate. It's not, but it's not as reliable. I mean, you're not gonna. I I don't think you're gonna find false data. It would it will just not be as complete and as thorough. It's much better to rely because you're making an investment. It's much better to rely on sources that are not uh, public. One public that could work, it's in Yeah. I N E G I dot com. Yeah. It's part. Well, I don't know if, if it's dot com, but you look, you can search for Inehi. The information is there. Uh, the as mentioned, as Gabby mentioned, you have to go through the whole site in order to make your own analysis. Uh, it will take you some time, but there is the information. The information, it's not very... Uh, it's coming not from... Not analyzed. It's like, like raw yeah. information that you need to analyze. Yeah, either. it's it's coming from the the, the, the annual or biannual census, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, the annual it's census. regarding yeah. demographics, economics uh, in Mexico. It's, uh, it's the government central uh, information... Uh, Office, yeah, but organization, and you can you can find it there in Inehi. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, we'll continue with the questions later on because uh, our our guests already arrived. Uh, thank you, uh, Jean Francois, for being here. Uh, we're also in in LinkedIn LinkedIn uh, uh, live stream. So uh, thank you for being here, uh, Jean Francois Racine, uh, general manager of uh, Trevi Manufacturing. And uh, he's going to explain a little bit. Uh, uh, well, he's going to present the company and uh, himself and uh, how we have a couple of questions for him. OK, uh, hi to everyone. Uh, so uh, Trevi Manufacturing is a uh, Quebec based uh, based company. Um, it's a private company that, uh, that is has been in business for about 50 years. Um, the uh, owner and founder is still uh, working um, in the company. And um, so we are uh, obviously uh, manufacturing and distributing uh, pool products. Um, we uh, now it's a little bit over uh, the, the numbers you have there is a little bit dated because uh, as of the last year, we were about uh, 1800 employees. Um, and um, we have now uh, uh, manufacturing units in uh, Quebec. We have two uh, two plants. Uh, 
uh, one in Tennessee, uh, USA, and one in uh, Monterey, uh, Mexico. So um, we have also in Quebec uh, 12 uh, stores, corporate stores, uh, and um, dozens, uh, tens of uh, buildings also uh, in, the, in the Quebec area. So we are um, Trevi Manufacturing, uh, which is the uh, division uh, division that I'm uh, managing, is the um, the division that distribute the the pools, uh, mainly above ground pools and and liners uh, in the states, which is our first um, first market, uh, and uh, in the United States, uh, should pre uh, precise and. Um, it's our first market, and uh, we uh, sell the, the products also in Quebec. Um, and um, so we we uh, were selling uh, above ground pools and uh, liners. We're manufacturing uh, the liners and the above ground pools in uh, in Mirabel, Quebec. And uh, am I, I is it uh, is it good, uh, Manuel? I can. Manuel, you're on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, that's mainly it. It's. Uh, it's. Uh, um, I. I think we have a couple of questions I, for you. So. Uh, I do. Gabby's gonna make them. Uh, go ahead, Gabby. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Manuel, and thanks, Jean Francois, for being here with us. Uh, yeah, like you were explaining, uh, the the case of Trevi was very specific in Mexico. And Manuel, we were talking before a bit about the different options that someone would have or a company would have to start operations in Mexico. I was just wondering if you can tell us a bit more on why did you sh did you choose shelter as the solution for Trevi? Um, in fact, uh, the, the reason, the main reason, is it was really a, quite a matter of time and uh, time and resources. Uh, but the major point was the time. Uh, we wanted. Uh, we we started discussing uh, about uh, opening uh, an outfit in Mexico, uh, beginning beginning of uh, 2021. Uh, we seriously uh, more around uh, April of uh, 2021. And uh, from what I we got from uh, uh, as information uh, was that uh, opening a company in Mexico would take uh, somewhere between uh, one and two years uh, doing it by ourselves, uh, and that uh, we we might be able to do it in six months uh, with a shelter. Um, so uh, with the experience now, <laughs> I can I, I can say that. Uh, uh, Doing it in six months uh, would, uh, I think, would be feasible. But uh, it took a bit more than that, but not that much. We we uh, we started the uh, the, um, the the production and training uh, somewhere between uh, December and January. Uh, so um, so that that was the reason why for the shelter. So the time the time frame uh, of uh, starting the outfit. And obviously, uh, the the legal part of the of the setup that uh, didn't uh, require uh, required uh, required us to open a, a company in Mexico uh, with all the liabilities and the the, the 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 legal stuff we would have to go through. So uh, that's why we we chose the, the shelter. Okay, thanks. Yeah, actually, yeah, true. It was. It was quite fast, and you did training, hiring, a lot of a, a lot of things in in that time. Thanks. And another question: Why did you choose uh, Nuevo León to work with a shelter there? We uh, we we chose chose the, the region uh, mainly because of the uh, the easy access to uh, to to, uh, to Texas uh, through the Laredo uh, Laredo Highway. So uh, that's that's a major point because we we have to uh, take the, all the products that are manufactured uh, to the U.S. or back to Canada. So. Uh, we were looking at a place, uh, an area where there was a lot of people, because our first objective was uh, was to uh, to have a lot of uh, a 
big work, workforce uh, available. So we were uh, looking into Saltillo and uh, Monterrey, and uh, finally we, we chose Monterrey because of the, the, the labor force uh, and the population uh, of the city. Okay. Okay, interesting. And so once you decide, okay, I'm doing business in Mexico, you that you have had the experience of starting the company, starting running the operation and everything, what do you think are the two main things that you have to keep in mind when you when you do business in Mexico? Two, three, if you have more, or one, if you only say this is the Q1. So the, the, uh, I, I'm addressing to people from uh, from uh, Canada, from Montreal. Yeah. From, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, I would say uh, we have to be aware that uh, the speed uh, speed uh, limits are different in Mexico than <laughs> Montreal. Uh, it's everything. Everything takes longer. Uh, people uh, talk forever. <laughs> 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 Just to say hello, it's five, four, four uh, sentences, and uh, so um, so the the main the main looking back, uh, the the main uh, advice I would have to give if someone wants to start start the company very fast, uh, doing I would have I would I would have had to move here for a few months, and we would have been uh, much better, and I think we would have started it uh, probably between three and four months. We could have had something uh, up and running, but um, so uh, that's difference is really the the, the lead times and the, the fact that um, it's very hard, it's very hard to manage that uh, at a di distance. And so uh, I don't know if I answer your question, uh, Gabriela. Yeah, totally. And I just have one last one. So. Could you share with us a bit on how do you think Stratica helped you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Stratica helped me in a way, uh, they helped me a lot in the project for sure. Um, just when, when we didn't, I, I didn't, I, I hadn't start, start, uh, started a company anywhere uh, outside of, uh, of Canada before. So uh, it's uh, just to do uh, the, Looking for a place, looking for a city, looking for the area, uh, know, knowing to who to talk to, especially choosing the shelter. I needed to to have some kind of uh, guidance. To uh, I could have done it by myself, but obviously uh, things are different, and uh, it's, it depends how you are. But we we are we like to to think that we don't know everything, and we we Mexico is different. Uh, and uh, I think having uh, having a, a guide to uh, to help us through that process uh, that process helped uh, a lot. So uh, uh, we save uh, it costs money, obviously, but uh, I think we we, we saved uh, at least the the equivalent and uh, saved a lot of time uh, on the project for sure. And Great. we can Thanks. say, uh, Jean Francois, that it was not. Uh, as smooth as we thought in the beginning, right? It, it, we, we faced a couple of uh, unseen challenge with, with the, with the real estate, particularly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. thank you very much, uh, Jean Francois. It's uh, really nice to know that uh, we can, we, we, we were able to help you, and we will continue uh, to, to support you through, uh, through your operations in Mexico. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I, I want also to to thank everybody uh, in, in the team. Uh, Christina, thank you very much for uh, organizing this. Um, Gabi, uh, Belly, Laura, Marisa, and uh, the people that is behind this, uh, uh, Axel and uh, and uh, Edgar Trujillo. Thank you very much for for uh, helping us getting this this uh, webinar up and and, and running. And um, don't feel, uh, I mean, if you have questions, contact us. We're here to help you uh, get your business up and running in Mexico. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Christine.